Okay, this is an old take on a video I did a long time ago. Only that was bracelets. This is going to be a choker necklace. So how much do you take of this wire? If I knew, I would tell you, but I'm just going to take three feet. I'm going to guesstimate what three feet is. I think this is three feet. I don't know. But this is the coolest thing ever. First, you come to the middle of your wire, and you find the middle by putting the two ends together and then finding the middle. And right here you just make yourself a cute little loop. Now, the size of these loops, I just guesstimate with my fingers, but basically, eh, I don't know. They're about three quarters of an inch long, about half an inch wide. Something about, you know, like, you could say a centimeter and a half long and one centimeter wide. Um, but anyway, you wanna do a double twist. If you do triple, that's okay too, but you don't wanna do one twist because it tends to come undone. So double twist is good. And then you fold this over and you fold this over and you basically try to make another loop, but make this one a little bigger, but try to get it rounded. And the best way to, you could probably stick a marker in there to get each one perfectly round if you want, but I find it's more fun to just take a, a guess and come out a little bit wrong. But you wanna make it a little bigger than this one because when you do the twisting, it shrinks a little bit. So just the tiniest bit bigger and Boom, and now hold it, hold your fingers in there like that, and twist, and twist. Sorry, these wires are really long, they're banging the camera and everything. So see that? Almost the same size after the twists. And then you do it again. And, ba -ba. Hmm, a little bit. And it, you know, trial and error. If that one ended up a little bit bigger than you wanted, then make the next one a little bit smaller, and so on. All right, so I'm just gonna keep doing this until I get about, eh, it's at 11 inches. Cause you wanna make this, if it's gonna be a choker, you wanna make it as small as the smallest neck out there. Cause you can always extend it in the back with chain um, to make it fit every other size. So what is the tightest, smallest um, neck? Probably 10 inches for like some young teeny boppers. Um, not, not counting kids like, we're not gonna make a choker like this for like a three-year-old. I mean, I don't know, I don't wanna tell you what to do, but that's just what I'm saying. Um, but yeah, like young teens type, probably 10 inches. So let's say 10 inches we're aiming for. So we're gonna keep making these till we get to about 10 inches or about 21, 22 centimeters. All right. And again, don't try to make this perfect. It's not gonna be perfect. Nobody's, see, look at, look at how different those are. That one's medium, a little bigger, a little smaller, a little bigger. Nobody's gonna be looking at this part once you do all the other parts you'll see. So just have fun and make it look cool. Now this could be the choker just by itself. That's a cool, that almost looks like a pattern you see in a lot of chokers, but we're gonna make it cooler. Don't worry, don't worry. So I'm gonna get these all the way to about 10 inches and then we'll do the next part. Not sure if I mentioned this is 18 gauge. It would work with 20 gauge also it might work with 16. Anytime you watch one of my videos, if you don't have the exact gauge, you can usually move up or down one set. And since they generally don't sell odd numbered gauges, when I say up or down, I mean, if it's 18, you can move up to 16 or down to 20. It sounds like I'm saying the opposite, but if you know gauges, they run the opposite of what you think. The, the larger, rather the smaller numbers make a thicker gauge. Who invented it and created it to be that way? I don't know. Why did they do it? I don't know that either. Maybe you know. Maybe you'll tell me in the comments. But until we figure out that mystery, we just accept it for what it is. We can be cranky. We can bang on the wall and be mad that it doesn't follow the intuition of how we would do it. But still got to accept it because they're not going to go back and relabel all the gauges in the world that have ever been made. So you have to deal with life the way it is. Sorry. You can talk to your therapist about it. But let's move on. Okay, as you can see, I am right at nine and a half inches. So I'm about to get to my final mark with my final one here. So how do we end it? Well, let's make one more. And I don't even remember how to end it, but I'm gonna say, do that twist and then, hmm, no, I don't like that. That's a better way to end it. Let's unwind that twist. Let's say, yeah, I have a better way. 
Let me straighten this out before it turns into a kink. Did you know you can straighten out wire that was kinking already? You just follow it back, you unwind it. If it's twisting, you untwist it. If it's making a little loop, a little divot, you undivot it, you flatten it out again. You follow it back. And if you're careful and patient, you can unkink it. And why do we want to unkink it? Because a kink pulled tighter and tighter and tighter will turn into a break. And then your whole piece is broken and starts to unravel. And then you cry and then you have more sessions with your therapist. All right, so this final one, I'm going to make the loop, but I'm going to come around like this. See now, because I had to unkink it, it looks a little bit less beautiful. It looks a little bit, uh, a little bit, what's the word? Distressed. It is distressed. It probably has its own therapist, but that's okay. Just keep messing with it. Get it back to a nice oval. Okay, so you bring it back, push this guy to the side, push, bring this guy around like this. And now if you, um, if you had a long enough piece of wire, hey, look, looks like a man saying, what's up? What's up? Hey, give me a hug. Um, if, if you had a much longer piece of wire, you could start the next part, but you don't need to worry because this is made to be done in two parts. And just saying, if you happen to take way, way, way too much, maybe you could start the next part, but it's a little risky. So we're going to take, um, all right. So take, He's folded over like this, see? See, that's just a loop like that. So he's, I'm gonna cross over so both his arms, or rather both the wires are facing the same way, right? And then we're gonna just, just come around like that, get them both together. And we're just basically gonna wrap it around here a couple times to end it. We're gonna make us, pretend he's a little face, we're gonna make a scarf. They're no longer his arms. Now you have to think of this as the top of a scarf and it's wrapping around under his chin. Get it nice and tight. It's gonna wanna keep bending. Just hold it, hold it firm and then move it. And once you've built up the scarf over like two or three or four or five um, layers, then cut it halfway across the loop in the middle. Careful not to cut anything else and tuck these two ends into the little bowl made by that scarf. So tuck and tuck. All right. And now we have a closed loop and all the way to that side. Ta-da. Now take a minute and just make sure everything is kind of straight, but don't go too crazy because the next part is going to wonk it out again anyway. All right. Got your 10 inches. Happy. Are you happy? I'm happy. All right, now we'll take more of our 18 gauge. How much are we gonna need for this part? Nah, I'd probably say about, to be on the safe side, let's say about 18 inches, about a foot and a half. And now I'm gonna go a little more. I'm gonna say, let's do two whole feet because if we run out, that's bad. But if we have extra, that's okay. We can always use the extra. Like see these two parts here, they could be used for uh, earrings or something. You can save your scraps in a little piece plastic box if you want, or you can throw them out. I'm not going to judge you. I used to save tons and tons and tons of scraps, but I didn't have a good organizational system, so they were just a mess, and I never ended up using them. So now I save scraps if they're longer than like five or six inches, because then I can make them into a ring right away. Um, but these these could be made into little beads, bead, stacks of beads, with a little loop, and then they could be earrings. So save them for now. Hopefully I'll remember to do something with them. All right, so this next guy. Um, we're going to start him out doing the same thing. He's going to come right over here. Just take a, you know, maybe maybe an inch, maybe two centimeters, right? And maybe a little more. And we're going to wrap him up through here. And and then he's we're going to tuck him into the same bowl that we made with the other scarf, right? So he's nice and tucked. Now this is a, Make sure you get it way in the bowl. If you don't get it all the way in the bowl, just... Unwind, unwind it and start again because you want it, this to be nice and secure and you want it tucked deep in the bowl so it's not going to come out and scratch somebody, especially if they're wearing it as a choker. Definitely don't need a sharp wire coming out to get their neck. Ah! Suddenly your your good intentions turn into a horror movie. Okay. Get this guy. Okay. Good. Let's tighten that up right there. All right. Now, see this? This is the fun part. Actually, this whole thing is fun. You really can't mess up. This is so easy. We're going to take 
Um, now you could take any size bead you want. If you find beads that fit 18 gauge, or if you're doing this in 20 gauge, and you find four millimeter, that's the little beads the size of a head of a pin. If you can fit them, that'd be really cute. Um, I find they're hard to find. So, eh, I shouldn't say that. Maybe, let me see if I can find some real quick. But my point is six millimeter beads is what I was finding on. Six millimeter about the size of a green pea, maybe a little smaller. So they're really versatile size. I use them for almost everything. Sometimes I just chew on a bunch if I'm feeling, no, I'm just, don't anybody do that at home. You could choke and you could, you could uh, cut yourself. Okay. Ooh, I found these cute little four millimeter beads that actually do fit, but I'm going to go back with a six millimeter because I just like the color. This four millimeter almost fits. All right. So these are like rose quartz, but they have a little bit more going on. They might be a type of agate or they might be what's called cherry quartz, which is like rose quartz, but a little bit more darker color going on there. But they're so pretty and we're going to use them. All right. So you put your bead on and you slide it all the way down to the end. Whee! And then you put it right in the middle, right between your loop like that. And then once you kind of have it in the middle, you crimp it and crimp it. So you're trying to get it right in the middle of that loop and you're trying to crimp it in place. Are you going to get it perfect? Absolutely not. It's going to look like, ugh, this isn't quite right. But just crimp it and crimp it and bend it and kind of do your best, right? And then wrap it around this little guy here and come to the next one. Again, do your best to try to get it in the middle and then crimp it and crimp it and then wrap it around the next one do you sense a pattern happening here sometimes you gotta push it a little bit further up from the middle because then when you crimp it it backs up a little bit but you'll figure it out trial and error and then just having fun and just not worrying if it doesn't look perfect because it's not going to be perfect. It's going to be handmade, which is a little less than perfect, but beautifully, magically, universally better than machine made because machine made, everybody has. Handmade is only done once by you each time. I'm finding that wrapping it twice kind of over strengthens the overall chain. So that's another thing, but either way, it's going to be fine. I mean, twice around this little middle part here before getting to the next bead. Okay, when you come to the end, this side is open. We didn't put a bead. And same with this last side. You don't have to put a bead in the last part. That's going to be, you can, but that's just going to be the connection to get it to close or clasp or add to the chain in the back of the neck. So what we're going to do to mirror this side, we're going to just scarf it again. And this time with one um, wire and everything's already stationary, it's much easier to just wrap this and just stack the wraps like that until you feel like it's gone about a third of the way up. And then you, again, just put the wire right, kind of bend it up diagonally and halfway across the loop, give it a cut, pinch the um, sharp end towards the middle of the bowl. So it's hovering over that bowl right there. And then angle it again and pinch it down deep in the bowl. So it never comes out and scratches anyone, boom. Now you have this beautiful choker, and now you can do this several ways. You, it doesn't have to be a choker. It could be a regular necklace. You can bend it like this and just have it be a necklace. And again, we're gonna add chain to the back, or you could make it an actual choker, and you can bend it around a neck. Either way, um, it's gonna be really cute, and whoever wears it is gonna love it. Um, you can also, whether it's a choker or it's a longer necklace, you can find the middle bead. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So this is my middle bead right here, and you can hang a little pendant, a little from down there. Let's see, I think I have one. I have a little oval amethyst. That would be cute. And I have a little heart rose quartz, and that would also be cute. I think I'm gonna go with the heart. I'm going to use 20 gauge silver for this non-tarnish silver plated wire. 
a little less than two feet, a little more than a foot and a half, somewhere in there. Now you should get, if you're gonna follow the way I'm doing this, you should get a piece that's drilled straight through top to bottom. But it doesn't have to be. You could wire wrap any piece and attach it any way you like. And if you're not sure how to do it with your particular piece, I have a lot of different videos unwrapping like different stones with holes or without holes. So you can look at those. Or you can just close your eyes and meditate and it'll just come to you, maybe. Or you can just eat a lot of bran flake cereal and your brain will be stimulated and you'll figure it out on your own. I don't know. All right, so we're in the middle of the stone and we're gonna go, we're gonna bend it and bend it like that. And we're gonna wrap a loop right there. You can put a little um, pen in there to get it just right, but I, I find it, you can just wrap it just like that and then roll it to the size you want. And, and then I like to wrap it around itself once. Really tight, holds it in place. And then I come around here. I, this is the signature thing I love to do. Come around here and I bring this guy around the, up from the bottom, this guy down from the top, and they cross. And then I pick a spot, sometimes, usually in a corner somewhere, but it doesn't matter where. Pick a spot and have them start to wrap around each other. They're both chasing each other, They're both coming around. Move one at a time. And I'm pressing down with my thumb to make it tight as I'm moving one at a time. And you start to make a swirl. And um, you can make your swirl tight, you can make it loose meaning you can have it so tight you can't see anything in between it, or you can have it so loose that you can see the stone in between. doesn't matter. But then eventually I bring I have the two ends coming together like this, and then I will wrap one across here, one across here, and in the back here I'm going to cross them and twist twice because that kind of holds their spot better like that. And then they're gonna come back up the front like that. And I'm gonna curve both of them up towards the loop and just kind of position them the way I want, just right. And then they start to scarf. And this is a really fun pattern you can do over and over and over again in so many pieces. Look how pretty that comes out. You can adjust it a little with your fingernail and we'll just stack the scarf a little higher and that's high enough. It's almost at the top. Get your cutters, make sure you only cut the wires you want to cut. Don't aim them at your face because they could shoot. Make sure you're wearing safety glasses or regular glasses or you close your eyes and you tell everyone in the vicinity to duck. And again, tuck in the sharp ends, boom. Make sure that's all tight. Tight, not moving. That one's moving a little bit. Let's give it a little crimp. Let's see what's happening in back there. Let's push it flat. Is it still moving? Oh, it's more secure now. It's still a little bit of movement. Let's give it a little crimp. Tighten it up. Moving still. No, now it's not much more secure. That one. And then you can also take your fingernail and adjust them more as you like. All right. Now just a jump ring or two right in the middle part and it hangs perfectly. If you don't have a middle part, just pick one. Like if you have an even number of beads and so the middle part would be right there. You could hang it right there, but I think it looks better hanging right like that. So just pick one. And once these go around the neck, no one will know that, oops, you have an odd number coming around one side more than the other. Nah, nobody will care or see. There we go. I find that two or three jump rings holds it better and it keeps it from spinning as much. And it looks kind of cool. They kind of, the jump rings kind of mirror the scarfing down there. All right, so now we just add a few lengths of chain on one side and a few lengths on the other side and a lobster clasp and we're done. Get some nice chunky chains so you can clasp the lobster clasp anywhere you want. You only want a little bit of chain on one side if you want it to be truly adjustable to a small neck all the way to a large. Most people, nine out of 10 are right-handed so I always put the clasp on the right side as they're putting it on, but the other side, you want to put a lot of chain if you want to make it adjustable to people with the largest size neck. So I would I would do about two inches on, on this side and maybe, let's see, two inches, that brings us to um, 12 inches. So maybe six or seven inches on the other side. And then, then we cover all sizes. Unless you know the size of the person, you can fit it to them. 
but if it's going to be if you're going to sell it or if it's a gift of, for someone you don't know for sure how they like it it's better to err on the side of making it really adjustable so i'm going to do about six inches there and and obviously you can do much larger chain if you want it to hang down more and not be a choker so many variations you can do on this.